What's up today, my wonderful family? Thank y'all for tuning in to another video. Listen, what I want to talk to you about is do the demons know you by name, okay? And what do I mean by this? This is exactly what I mean. You know, if you take the time, well, let me go ahead and ask you to take the time, right? Take the time to read in Acts 19, okay? And there you will you will understand exactly where I'm coming from, okay? So you may want to pause this, go read Acts 19, and then come back to the video, right? Now let me pause for a second, because I know a lot of y'all, I know a lot of y'all going to say, man, I ain't got time to be, I'm not about to, I'm not about to be doing it. And, and listen, I understand, all right? So I'm going to be realistic, and <laughs> I'm going to be realistic and know that a lot of y'all are not going to do it. But to the one who does, I'm talking to you, all right? So listen, uh, what I mean by do the do the demons know your name? As you can see in, in Acts 19, right? Uh, someone is attempting to, let's say, cast out evil spirits, right? And uh, the demon is uh, basically saying, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? So the demons recognize Jesus and the demons recognize Paul, right? So what you have to ask yourself as a Christian is, do, do the demons recognize you? Okay? Do the demons even recognize you? In other words, do they even take you into consideration? See, you got to want to get to the point to where, you know, you got to get to the point to where you, you want to be viewed as a threat, right? You want to be viewed as a threat to the enemy, to where when you wake up in the morning, the demons are trembling, right? To where when you go places, the demons, they don't even want to go there. In other words, if they're, if you're in a place and let's say there's five other people in there who don't even know the Lord, right? The demons having a meeting telling the other demons, look, don't go there. Why? Because uh, I'm going to just say that your name is Paul, okay? Let's use that for this illustration. Uh, the demons would be like, look, don't go to that place because, because Paul is there. And, and, and in other words, Paul can cast you out or, or Paul is filled with the spirit and we can't really be around that, you know. But if Paul is not there, right, the demons may want to go there because, in other words, they can torture and torment and, and, and uh, basically uh, some people, you know, call it like putting a black cloud or like some people wake up in the morning and they're just in, in a bad mood and they can't identify what it is. They're like, man, is it what I ate last night? You know, is it because I did this? Is it because I, I, I did this? Right. But you have to take into consideration that there that the devil is after you. Right. And so you have to you have to rebuke him. That's that's literally what you have to do. OK, so let me get back to what I was saying. Now, there could be five people in a place. And in other words, in other words, the enemy can be playing with them. Right. Because they don't know how to defeat the enemy. They don't know how to, let's say, cast him out or they don't know how to rebuke him. They don't know how to use the word of God against the enemy. Right. All they know is that they may not even know uh, of the Lord. Right. So the enemy can play with them and torment them all uh, all that he wants to. But guess what? If you're around, the enemy may not want to go there because why the demons, they know you by name. So uh, basically what I want to share with you is you got to. Man, you got to want to spend so much time with the Lord. You got to really want to soak in his word. You got to really want to be a child of God to where you're ready for these type of battles. OK, like you have to hold your head up like you can't just be a Christian walking around with, with your head down. Like, why do you have your head down if the demons know you by name, if the demons are trying to stay away from you? OK, so your head should be up because guess what? You have to realize what type of authority that you have in Luke 10, 19, right? The word of God says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Right. So you have to understand what type of authority that you have been given. But if you don't know what kind of authority that you have been given, guess what? You don't walk around with your head down. Then the enemy. Now, the enemy is smart now. Right. So. You really already defeated the enemy as long as you know God's word and, and, and you apply it and you believe in it. Right. But if you walk around with your head down, guess what? It flips around and now the enemy is going to defeat you because you don't even know the word. You know, we have a lot of books. We got books that, you know, people, you know, write books all the time. And, it, and there's, there's nothing against books, you know, books that help you and stuff like that. But, man, listen, you got to get back to the Bible. 
You know, you have to get back to the true uh, to the true word of God. Right. And you got to you got to want to go so far in your Christian walk to where you are a threat to the enemy. When you wake up in the morning. The enemy should be, oh, man, here he is again. Here she is again. Up, oh, she about to pray. Up, oh, up. Oh. He, he about to plead the blood of Jesus over his whole day, over his uh, workplace, over his family, uh, over his future, o- over uh, over his wife, over his wife's family. Or she's about to plead the blood of Jesus over her, her husband's family, this and that. Up, oh, what? He plead, he pleading the blood of Jesus over his car for no uh, no accidents, Uh He's praying Psalms 91 over this, over that. Like, you have to be a threat. You can't just be the person and, and you just say, okay, I go to church and, and cool, I'm good. No, man, you have to you have to go beyond that. It's not enough just to sit in church. You have to actually apply what you are, what you are being taught. You got to want to grow closer to the Lord, okay? So in conclusion in this video, I just want to encourage you, you know, to uh, to stay strong. And know that you are a true child of God, no matter how far you feel that you are away from the Lord, right? No matter how far, the Bible says, draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you. So guess what? Like I always say, if you are a million steps away from the Lord, all you got to do is take one step, right? And, he, and he's coming right there to meet you halfway. He will, he will take, if you're 100 steps away, he will take 99 if you will take that one. Because God is not going to hit you over your head and try to make you seek him. No, he wants you to do it uh, on, on, your, on your own accord. Think about it like this. If I, was a, if I was a billionaire, right, and I just kept giving you a million dollars every day, common sense would tell me if you keep on calling my phone or you keep on knocking on my door, right, I, I can't tell if you really like me for me. I mean, I give you a million dollars every single day. But if I don't give you anything, and you come knocking on my door, let's say wanting to get to know me or wanting to have a cup of soup or something and talk, then I, then, then I might say, well, you know what, even though I am a billionaire, this person just generally wants a relationship, right? And then the blessings come after that because let's say, you know, you're seeking the person's heart instead of their pocket, right? Listen, it's the same way with God. Listen, you want to seek God's heart. Don't worry, the, the blessings are going to come. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So don't worry about the blessings. Stop focusing on the blessings. You're going to get blessed as a child of God. Right. But you want to seek the Lord. You want to seek him for who he is and what he's done. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. Listen, that's more than even if that was the only thing he ever did. That's still enough right there. So you want to seek him because of that and because the Bible says of that. Uh, We love him because he loved us first. So God loved you first. So that's enough for you to go after him and seek him with all of your heart. Point blank, period. And in that pursuit, you'll you'll understand what type of authority that the Lord has given unto you. Right. And you won't walk around with your head down anymore. You will know that the demons know you by name. Right. So, listen, I love you, man. I hope this video, you know, uh, really, really helps you. Uh, you know, that's my prayer for you. You know, stay encouraged. Let me know if you need anything. You ever want to talk about anything, you know, add me on Facebook or Instagram or, uh, you know, all the social networks. Listen, hit that thumbs up button if, if you appreciate this video. And do me one more favor. One more small favor. Now, I'm trying to think if this was a third video in a row or if this was the fourth video in a row. I'm going to say number four. I think it's the fourth video. Four days in a row. In the comment section below of this video, write four days in a row all right that's what i want you to do right four days in a row and i'm hit that thumbs up button on every single one of your comments i love you i appreciate you i look forward to tomorrow i got a a, another video coming for you i plan to go day by day all right i love you thanks again for tuning in drop that comment (laughs) i'll talk to you tomorrow